Hey, welcome to Learn Jazz Drums. Today I'm going to teach you how to play jazz on the drums. So I'm going to break it down in four steps, and by the end of this video, you'll be able to play a basic jazz pattern on the drum set. Or at the very least, you're going to know what you need to practice in order to do so. All right, so I'm gonna break this down into four steps, and if you download the PDF that's linked in the description below, I have everything written out, and it'll be super helpful to follow along with. So step one is the ride symbol. So that's this symbol right here, and some people consider all of these symbols to be ride symbols, and I do treat them all like ride symbols, but usually this symbol right here is the ride symbol, and it's the calling card for most jazz drummers. Now there's a lot of history of music that leads up to the ride symbol being the calling card for jazz, but for about the last 60 years or so, this is the primary focus in jazz drumming. So here's the basic pattern. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. So make sure when you're first starting out that you're thinking of this as triplets. So if you divide up triplets, it's one and a, two and a, if you count it like that. And then you can go one, two and a, three. So you're playing the two and then the a. Uh. So one, two, a, three, four, a, one, two, a, three, four, a, one. Now don't take the triplet subdivision on a metronome and play along with that. You don't want to be that robotic with it because there's all sorts of variations that you can do with the ride symbol. But to start off, maybe just sing triplets to yourself. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. So the driving force of this and all of jazz music is the quarter note. So you can just play quarter notes. One, two, three, four. And then you add the skip note from there, which is the and one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one. And there's two basic schools of thoughts as to how you treat this in your hand. Some people take quarter notes and then they do a separate motion for the actual skip note, like so. And that's more in line with what I learned from Peter Erskine and what also many great jazz drummers did like Jimmy Cobb. And you can hear their cymbal sounding like that and it sounds great, it's really swinging. And there's all sorts of records and all sorts of videos you can hear and see these people playing the ride cymbal like that. But then there's another school of thought, which is what I got from Jeff Hamilton and it comes out of the lineage of Mel Lewis and John Von Olen and a lot of these drummers. And the idea here is that you treat the ride cymbal pattern as a three note pattern all one fluid motion and it's really loose in your hand. And I'll actually start it on beat two because really the motion starts on beat two. You drop your hand on beat two and then you get three notes out of it. But then you just manipulate it a little bit with your fingers but not a ton. So one, two, three, four, one. So the primary reason for this is that it keeps you nice and loose and it allows you to just be very relaxed on the drums if your ride cymbal pattern is just, you're just dropping your hand like this and you're super comfortable with it. But another reason is because no matter what ride cymbal pattern pl you play, when you get to a fast tempo, you basically end up doing this pattern. I'll show you. So let's start with just quarter notes, adding the skip note, and then bring it up to a faster tempo. You'll notice what happens in my hand. So this is what happens with all jazz drummers. At a certain point, at a certain speed, that three note pattern just has to become one motion because it's too fast to actually be playing separately for the skip note. So the idea of this pattern and doing it as a three note group in your hand is that you just drop it the same way you do at fast tempos, but you bring it to a slower tempo. So now I'll start fast and then go back down to slow.
So if you want to play just quarter notes and add the skip note like this, just know that your technique is going to change as you get faster. But if you want to keep it the same at all tempos, then you're going to want to do the technique where you drop it for all three. So depending on the style of jazz you're playing, it might make more sense to do one technique versus the other. But from my experience, it takes students a little bit longer to learn the looser technique in the style of Jeff Hamilton. But once they learn it, it really pays off and it opens up a world of possibilities and it makes you just overall more relaxed on the drums. However, if this is literally your first time playing jazz drums, I would just start with quarter notes and then adding the skip note. All right, so step number two is the hi-hat, and the hi-hat is actually just played on beats two and four, perfectly in sync with the ride cymbal. Pretty self-explanatory, but very important. So here it is by itself. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then I'll add the ride cymbal. So it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's definitely vital to jazz drumming, and it's important to be able to do this both heel up and heel down. So over time you'll start to notice things like when you play heel up, it's going to be a little bit of a crisper, tighter sound, and sometimes it's going to be a little bit louder depending on your control because your entire leg is coming down on the hi-hat stand. And this can be desirable in certain scenarios, but maybe it's desirable to play with heel down because it's a little bit more legato, a little bit of a longer sound, and usually a little bit lighter and less crisp. So I would say just make sure you can do both of these so that you can choose for a musical scenario whether or not it belongs to be doing heel up or heel down. And if you're just starting out though, just start with heel down playing two and four with quarter notes on the ride cymbal. That's gonna be the easiest to start out with. So if you're a beginner, just start like this. One, two, I want, two, three, four. And don't be afraid, start super slow if you need to. All right, so step number three is feathering the bass drum. So the bass drum, you actually feather on all four beats while the other limbs are doing what they're doing. And it's super quiet. It's barely coming off of the bass drum, kind of like this. And the goal of this is that it's not heard, but it's felt. And so it blends with the acoustic bass that's on stage. And maybe if you stopped feathering, the band would notice that something's missing, but they couldn't exactly tell you what it is. And if you want to learn more about feathering the bass drum, you can click the link up here or in the description below, and I actually have a full video specifically talking about feathering the bass drum. But here is feathering the bass drum by itself. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. So then maybe just try playing the bass drum and the hi-hat together by themselves without the ride cymbal. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. And then once you have that down, add quarter notes on the ride cymbal. One, two, one, two, three, four. So this is going to be the same at all tempos. I'll take it slow and then I'll speed it up. But it's important to keep in mind that the bass drum feathering is super, super quiet and the ride cymbal is going to be prominent. So you got to work on that balance between the limbs. One, two, three, four. So by now your brain might be going crazy because three limbs are doing crazy different things. I mean these are playing together but they're at different volume levels and then this is only playing on two and four. So if you need to break it down just take it super slow. And then maybe just take two limbs at a time. So maybe just do cymbal and bass drum together to work on that. And then maybe just do hi-hat and cymbal together. And then hi-hat and bass drum. All the combinations until you can put all three of them together. 
Now many great jazz drummers choose not to feather the bass drum, but the vast majority of them do feather the bass drum. So I think it's an important skill to just work on from the start, so that later on you can decide, do I want to feather the bass drum or do I not want to feather the bass drum, but you at least have the skill down and it's not something you have to learn later if you want to. But in general, most jazz drummers feather the bass drum and it's something you should work on. So once you have those three limbs down and you've worked on all that together and you can play that confidently, then we're going to move on to step four, which is snare drum comping. So if you followed the link in the description below, there's four comping exercises, just very simple comping exercises for the snare drum that you can add once you've put these three limbs together and you're looking to add a fourth. So comping example number one is just a basic cross stick on beat four. So you're already playing the time. So at first this might be difficult because you're having to play this just on beat 4, it's not like it locks in with the hi-hat, it's actually its own pattern. These are playing on all 4 beats, this is playing on 2 and 4, and then this lands only on beat 4. So if this is confusing your brain, just go back, take it slow, take the first 3 limbs, and then slowly build up until you can add a 4th limb. And now comping example number 2. This is what's called the Charleston rhythm, and it's just a dotted quarter followed by an 8th note that lands on beat 1 and then the and of 2. One, Two, I want two, three, four. So if I break that one down, you'll notice that these three limbs play the first one together snare drum, ride, and bass drum. And then the and of two is actually going to just be the skip note on the cymbal and the snare drum together. Nothing else is playing at the same time. So when you're first starting out, you might have to think like that, where you think, all right, these three limbs are together, and then on the next beat, it's just right hand, and then on the next beat, it's three limbs, and it's these three limbs, or something like that. If you break it down like that, it's super helpful. All right, so comping example number three is just one, two, and, and. Two, and, and. One, two, I want two, three, four. And if we take that one really slow, one, two, I want two, three, four. Since the snare drum is playing two and, and the ride cymbal is also playing two and, it might be difficult because you might want your snare drum to just match the hands. That's what's going to happen most naturally, is your hands are just going to want to do this. So that's something to practice, just getting it so this hand stops while this hand keeps going. And then comping example number four adds an accent in there so you can practice playing accents within your comping. So one, two, I oh, want two, three, four. And if we do it slow, one, two, I want two, three, four. This will be helpful to work out the balance because you're accenting those notes, but you're not accenting on the cymbal or the hi-hats or the bass drum. Nothing else should be affected just the snare drum is accenting. So those are just four basic comping patterns that you can use when you're playing jazz, but comping is always changing, and jazz is fluid, and it's not like you're gonna be sticking to one of those patterns at all throughout a song. These are just examples to get your hands and your coordination going.
there's really no book that can truly teach you how to comp. You just have to listen to a lot of different jazz. So first off, to start with, I would listen to Relaxin' with the Miles Davis Quintet. And that features Philly Joe Jones on drums, and it's a really great album. Another one, also by Miles Davis, is Kind of Blue, and that features Jimmy Cobb on drums. So both of these drummers are super swinging, and their drumming is super clear. So they're great albums to play along with, and great albums to also listen to how these guys are comping, and just copy their examples. And then you can head over to learnjazzdrums.co slash comping, where I have a full ebook with a companion course to go with it of over 100 exercises and examples of how you can comp on the drums. So you blend that book with your knowledge and listening of jazz, and you get the technique down, and then you know where to apply it in a musical scenario. So if you're having trouble with this, cut yourself some slack. This is a short video in the grand scheme of things. This stuff takes hours and hours of practice to get down. So just rewind the video, go back to the beginning, play along with the ride cymbal, find a good album that you like, or maybe a song on Kind of Blue, or relaxing with the Miles Davis Quintet, where you can just play along with it and practice just the ride cymbal. Just two of the limbs, just the feet, just the hand and the feet, just one comping pattern for the whole time. That's how you're going to have to do it to get really comfortable with this. So just to review, you have the ride cymbal pattern, and you can start with quarter notes, and then add the skip note, and you can do the hand technique where your hand is making a different motion for the skip note, or you can treat the whole thing as one big pattern. So one, two, three, four. And then you add two and four on the hi-hat to that. One, two, three, four. And then add the bass drum feathering. One, two, three, four. And then add a comping example. One, two, three, four. So now you can play a basic jazz pattern on the drums. Congrats! Again, if it's taking you a long time, don't feel bad. Just go back to the beginning of this video, go through it over and over, all the steps, and this is going to help you out. Just do this for hours and hours. That's what you have to do. And then, if you're looking for more comping examples, you can head over to learnjazzdrums.co slash comping, and there's a whole ebook and companion course there with tons of exercises and examples that you can learn for how to practice your comping. For tons more lessons on how to play jazz on the drums, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel because I actually come out with a new video lesson every single week. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.